Welcome to Sociology One. I wanted to offer you a quick sort of tour of our class in case you've never taken a Canvas class before. So this is what it should look like when you enter the course. Most of you will probably go to something like the syllabus. You click on the syllabus and you'll see that this is Sociology One. The thing I want to highlight here is that it's an online course and that our work will be due Fridays at 11.59 a.m. A lot of teachers do midnight. I do not do midnight. It's in the morning because I will grade your assignments from noon to about two or three o'clock. I'll be grading your assignments. So I set a deadline for a time of the day where I will be working on your assignments. I get them graded. You start the next weeks. Everything works out great. So we do not have a nighttime deadline. We have a daytime deadline. It's Friday, 11.59 a.m. You've got my office hours on here. I do offer my online students my cell phone number. I only want to receive texts, um, so please send me a text. If it's long and complicated, maybe you want to send me an email. But if there's a small problem, a quiz isn't loading, uh, there's a problem, please just send me a text. It's the quickest way to reach me. I only give it to my online students. Please don't share it. We have our midterm and final with our dates here, 10, 12 and 12, 14. I wanted to point out to you what happens if you fail to submit an assignment or a module or you miss the exam. Every student in this class starts off with 12 tokens and you can redeem the tokens if you have a problem. Let's say you're sick or you have to go out of town for work or your child gets sick or something happens you can hand in an assignment late. You give me three tokens, you send me an email, and you say, hey Mike, I missed the deadline, I will hand it in one week from today, here's my three tokens, I'll submit it by this date, you're good to go. I will grade it when you hand it in late, you won't receive any penalty, you just hand it in seven days late. If you don't hand in an assignment, and you don't hand it in a week late, you can give me six tokens and then you get an exemption from that module. It does not hurt you. You can take all zeros on everything for that module and I will turn them into almost like it doesn't impact your grade at all whatsoever. If you miss the date, the, de the second deadline and you don't give me six tokens, then you get zeros for that assignment. You only have 12 tokens. So for two weeks, you could basically take the week off and go on vacation or be sick or what have you. Or you could always hand in work late and you could do that four times because there's 12 tokens, three tokens each time. You could do that four times, you could hand in work late. What about extra credit? Well, if you want extra credit, well then never miss class, <laughs> never submit work late, and those 12 tokens will become 12 extra credit points at the end of the semester. Please send me an email and say, Mike, I would like to use my 12 tokens as extra credit at the end of the semester. I would recommend waiting until the end of the semester because you might need them to hand in late work or to get an exemption from a whole week's worth of work. And then our syllabus has our course summary. Again, notice all the due dates are 11.59 a.m. and you can see everything you have to do for each week. Are there any questions? <laughs> Oh, I did want to point out our required textbook. We've got Forest in the Trees and Dude, You're a Fag. I want to point out that Forest in the Trees is available as a free ebook on CMC's library webpage. So you can read our book online. You can print it out or print out, you know, 20 pages at a time. You don't have to buy Forest in the Trees. You do have to buy Dude, You're a Fag. Some people like to own books, they like to read books. It's a cheap book, so you could go out and buy it. If not, you can use it from the library. Let's go back to our modules. So what do we have to do each week? This is your typical module, but the first module looks like this. You're going to click on, welcome, tell me more about you. There's a bunch of questions. You will answer them briefly, shouldn't take a lot of time. I just wanna learn some information about you. The next one is a discussion board. You click on here, it'll take you to the discussion board. It's worth two points. As you can see, there's a due date. 
and I ask you to tell me and your classmates some information about yourself. And then we have our required reading, Forest in the Trees, page one through six. Not a lot of reading this week. Next week we have a lot more. Again, I want to point out the book is available on the library's webpage. I want to show you how to find it. Here's the link to the sociology ebooks at the library. You click on it, you have to click open in a new window. It opens, and you'll see right here how to find ebooks in EBSCOhost that the third book is The Forest in the Trees Sociology is Life, Practice, and Promise by Alan Johnson. And you'd click on here, it will open up. You need to open up the ebook, you click the PDF full text, there's our book, and eventually we'll get to page one. There we go. There's our first page. You can obviously go and print it out and you can read it online. I hope you find that useful. Let's go back to our module. So we would print out page one through six and then we'd click on the quiz. Now you can have your textbook open as you take the quiz. It's a very short quiz. It's only worth eight points. So what I would recommend is reading those six pages, then taking the quiz with the six pages open. You can look at your notes, you can see what you underlined. Uh, you could look at the question, then turn back to the text, and you should get an eight out of eight. Then you're gonna do lecture one, part one. Uh, I do lectures with embedded quizzes, so I wanna show you what that looks like. So you click on here, lecture one, part one quiz. Again, it tells you to open a new window. The new window pops open. This is the lecture. You're gonna click there. You can enter your first name, last name, email, and that's the lecture. You'll listen to the lecture. I recommend taking notes. And then from time to time, a quiz will pop up. Sometimes the quiz will be in the middle of the lecture, sometimes three quarters through the lecture, sometimes at the end of the lecture. Sometimes you'll have two quizzes within one lecture, one with three questions, one with five questions. So I ask you to not jump around, listen to the complete lecture. I've had students who have missed three questions and they say, oh, I didn't know there were these three questions. And I say, you were probably jumping around trying to speed things up a bit. So you, yes, you missed three questions. You got uh, five out of eight. You got all five of the, of the second ones right, but you missed the first three. Sorry about that. Watch the whole lecture, take all the quizzes. That's how you do it. So we're gonna do that a couple of times each week. Uh, the lectures, total time of lecture is usually about an hour um, at the most. And then you have, an you have a, a supplemental reading. You don't have to do this reading, but it's highly recommended that you read this because one of the most important concepts in this class is the sociological imagination. And this is the article where the scholar explains the sociological imagination. I lecture about it, but you can read his work. And then you have an assignment where you apply the sociological imagination to your life. You click there and it's a discussion assignment. So if you look at the discussion assignment, it says you have to respond to two classmates by the deadline and what's an acceptable response. I say, just ask them a question ask them a question. Um, a sociological question obviously is better, but I'm just asking you to sort of maybe push them to understand the material better by asking a good question. Uh, I do ask that you write at least 200 words. Uh, if you don't know how what 200 words looks like, um, I believe I can show that to you. So 200 words looks like this. 300 words looks about that much, 400 words, looks like that. I can use a word count, you can use a word count. Basically, you want to always fulfill the minimum word count. This week, for this particular assignment, I'm asking for 200 words. Think about your life and how you can apply the sociological imagination to your life and respond to two classmates. So there's that assignment. And then you're going to take another, do another lecture with another quiz. This one's worth seven points. There's another reading here, how to write a college level paper. I highly recommend reading that chapter on how to write like a college student. There's another assignment here. This one, it has a 400 word minimum word count. I do explain to you that if you want to make factual claims, you need to cite your sources. 
college writing requires factual claims. I do explain here that the prompt is intended to inspire your thinking and writing. You don't need to answer every question in the prompt from week to week, but rather think deeply and inquisitively about the issue, attempt to approach the issue like a sociologist, and find and interpret relevant facts and about the issue. So here's the prompt. I'm asking a lot of questions, and you're not required to answer all of them, but a lot of students say, I don't know what to write about, and I say, here's 10 questions. See what you can do with it. And you have all of these questions and you sort of start writing. And you're writing 400 words about this topic. You don't have to answer every single one, but you do have to think about the questions and sort of come up with an argument and put together your ideas. Approach it from the macro and meso levels, which you should understand after listening to the lecture. So definitely listen to the lecture. So then after that, we have another lecture, lecture one, part three, and there's a quiz that goes there. And last but not least, this week you will do an assignment where you research a career. Let's take a look at that one. So the careers I want you to consider are social worker, human service provider, law enforcement, criminologist, marketing and advertising, analytic and investigative journalism, human resource, resource director, industrial organizational psychologist, et cetera, et cetera. These are all the jobs I'm arguing that if you, per, if you continue on with sociology, you might consider going down one of these routes. With a bachelor's degree in sociology, all of these jobs are possibilities for you. So how do you learn more about the jobs? You're going to click on this link here. This is Copper Mountain College's sociology website. And here's the list of careers, just as you saw on the assignment. And you'd click on one. So I'm going to click on marriage and family therapist. I want to consider being a marriage and family therapist. I want to learn more about it. So I'm going to click on marriage and family therapist. It's going to bring me to the Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook. I'm going to type marriage, oh, there we go, marriage and family therapist, and go. And all of these links pop up. I'm going to click on the first one. It looks like the best. And I'm going to learn a lot of information about being a ma marriage and family therapist, their median pay, typical entry level education, work experience and related occupation. Um, about on-the-job training, whether the job is growing in America or whether it's shrinking. And then there's all of these websites I can read about more about marriage and family therapy. I can click on this one. It'll tell me about their duties. There's a summary. I can read about their work environment. And what I want you to do is if you're considering a job, which you should consider one of these jobs just to be open-minded, what can you learn about it from the Occupational Outlook Handbook or whatever web, web page I offer to you. What can you learn from the internet about this job? Because you should research a job before you go down that path. And then you'll just write about what you learned in the box. You'll click Submit Assignment and you will either do text entry where you type, you know, I researched marriage and family therapy and then you maybe pull some facts off of it. Maybe you're going to copy your source where you get the information from. And at the end of your thing, you write source, copy and paste that there. So I know where you got your information. And you'd write a paragraph telling me what you learned about marriage and family therapy or whatever job you're researching from the list. And you provide your sources so that I know where you got your information from and you are using real data, real information from a credible source. Okay, that's what we're doing this week. Uh, that's everything we're doing this week. And if you have any questions about the class, please feel free to email me, send me a text, or post on the discussion board.